Hello everyone, this is PKL Entertainment and we're back again and here now we have another video for you and we're going to talk about Batman Beyond, its overall impact and legacy and its status amongst the great era of animation series that we saw within the 1990s. Now there will likely be spoilers within this review so just beware when going into this overall video. Now Batman Beyond was produced by Warner Brothers Animation and debuted on January the 10th 1999 running for 3 seasons overall, 52 episodes and eventually ending on December the 18th 2001. It was a further continuation in the very much legendary DC animated universe created and pioneered by both Bruce Timm and Paul Dini, already making a significant impact earlier on within the decade with both the likes of Batman the Animated Series in 1992 and also Superman the Animated Series in 1996. Now the story of Batman Beyond as per the title indicates we very much continue the universe set within Batman the Animated Series by moving the continuity into a future timeline firstly in around 15 to 20 years post the events of the animated series where we see an aging Bruce Wayne continuing his crime fighting role as Batman despite the use of a high tech bat suit he comes to a defining moment when in pursuit of criminals attacking the victim he suffers a heart attack he's ultimately forced to take the use of a gun in order to fend the criminals from hurting the victim very much going against his mantra of never using a gun, Bruce suddenly realises that he's no longer physically capable to perform the role as Batman and he soon after retires and secludes into a lonely life within Wayne Manor. The story then moves into the year 2039 and very much of a futuristic landscape of Gotham City which now stands as a very much of a bustling city and metropolis full of flying vehicles and large skyscrapers. The story then introduces a young teenager known as Terry McGuinness who's recently come out of a probation and juvenile program. After coming into contact with Bruce, Terry then suffers a similar experience when his father is murdered by the notorious Joker gang. Having discovered Bruce's role as Batman, Terry falls under Bruce's tutelage and trains to become the new Batman and protects the current future of Gotham City. Over the course of the story, Terry comes across various villains and antagonists, facing various dilemmas as he balances his college life within his role as Batman. Now when looking back on Batman Beyond, it's very much remains an impressive and very much unique entry within the DC animated universe. Despite continuing the mythos of Batman the animated series, Batman Beyond very much stands on its own very much defined by its own distinctive tone and identity. The more gothic art deco noir of Batman the Animated Series has now been replaced with a more bleak cyberpunk science fiction techno aesthetic. Here we see some major influences, a lot coming from anime, especially with movies such as Akira, Cyber City Oedo 808 and Ghost in the Shell. Now despite this change, Batman Beyond still retains the cinematic and mature storytelling from the 1992 series. It was never overly graphic or violent, but still despite this, the show was indeed an antithesis to the more typical superhero adventure. And like the 1992 series, Batman Beyond would encounter far more complex and diverse villains, of which there was something more than a typical criminal robbing banks or wanting to take over the world. This dynamic always kept the show interesting and refreshing especially with its more compelling episodes. Now with the role of Terry McGuinness we also get a change of the typical lead character perspective. In the 1992 series we of course adapted Bruce Wayne's personal grief and dual identity of a playboy millionaire alongside the brooding vigilante amongst a lonely existence. Now with Terry McGuinness we've explored far more of a teenager youthful narrative. Terry has multiple friends, family, issues with homework, juggling school life with more social issues. He has to deal with various figures from his past as a juvenile offender and certainly throughout the show itself we would centre far more on social politics and issues, bullying, substance abuse, victimisation and youth culture as well. Terry himself was driven far more by a sense of vengeance and retribution following what happened in terms of the murder with his father. So we very much got much more of a typical Spider-Man Peter Parker narrative which was indeed the intention of the creators and they introduced this to try and appeal more to younger audiences. However, for all of its merits, by far the most engrossing element of the entire series is without question the relationship between both Bruce and Terry. There are so many fascinating dynamics in terms of a father and a son, a mentor and a student, youth and experience, impulse and wisdom and despite many times of disagreement, this is such a strong relationship lending a lot of the character depth and weight throughout the show. Bruce genuinely cares for Terry throughout this more tougher, very stricter approach in terms of teaching him the ways of becoming Batman. 
It comes with even more weight given his previous protégés, the likes of Dick Grayson and Tim Drake and Jason Todd, and the series constantly refers to past relationships and brilliantly intertwines them with that of Bruce and Terry's current relationship, and all of these scenes between them were so fantastic to watch and really maintained the strength, I believe, and much more of an emotional core and bond throughout the entire series. Now like the 1992 series, Batman Beyond would also have a core set of rogue villains. So most prominently we would have Blight who was businessman Derek Powers taking over ownership of Wayne Industries. And we would see Derek Powers eventually be exposed to a radioactive substance and certainly throughout the first season he has to constantly treat himself in order to contain his radioactive form. He also is responsible for the death of Terry's father. We have Ink who is very much of a femme fatale throughout the series who has the ability to manifest herself into a more liquidized form of which she can construct sharp and lethal objects. We have Kaware, who is a lethal ninja-like assassin who is part of the mysterious organization known as the Society of Assassins. We had Shriek who through wearing a metallic costume was able to create and manipulate sonic sound waves. We have Spellbinder who was able to also manipulate people but this time he would use illusions and dream visions. We then had the Stalker who was a genetically enhanced huntsman who originally is after Batman as a way to challenge himself but throughout the series he becomes much more of an ally when taking on various foes. We also had various gangs in terms of both the Jokers who were much more of a ragtag group of thugs inspired by the impression left from the original character and we also had the Royal Flush Gang who were far more of a richer more aristocratic group of bank robbers. Now to be honest I think one of the biggest weaknesses about the show is that it didn't quite utilise the villains characters quite as well as what the 1992 series did. I look in particular the likes of Blight who really should have been an ongoing antagonist throughout the entire series. Many of the villains are very striking in terms of their overall aesthetic but they just don't carry the same depth in terms of personality as what we saw from the 1992 series. There are also some episodes throughout the series that do feel like filler or very insignificant. One in particular involved Terry having to look after an egg-like construct baby and there was also another episode where he involved him communicating with gorillas. Now there was a clear intent here to try and give some of the seasons a more standalone like structure so that more newer viewers can jump into the show without having a more greater knowledge of what went on before but I think this kind of storytelling narrative takes away a lot of the urgency and sophistication certainly of what we saw within season one. Now in terms of the three seasons season one still remains the best in it as we saw the first introduction of the main villains as well as establishing the dynamic between Terry and Bruce and concluding the overall narrative concerning Bloyd himself. Now season two was still good but felt at times pretty standard nothing too spectacular in terms of any major revealing characters overall. Now season 3 did try to expand on the overall mythology and universe. We had many more episodes where Terry was really coming into his own and standing on his own TV as Batman. As well as this we saw the introduction of the future Justice League in a two part episode known as The Call and we also saw the introduction of the Cobra Syndicate. So if I had to give an overall score of Batman Beyond as an entire series I would give it a 7.9 out of 10. It really had such a great concept and was a fantastic visualisation, particularly of a future Gotham City. It was a great continuation of all already established mythos, but it was also bold enough to have its own direction and style in terms of its storytelling. Now in terms of the legacy of Batman Beyond, after ending its three season run, Terry McGuinness would continually appear in the Justice League Unlimited series, first of all in a two part time travelling episode, and then most prominently and also more powerfully in the season one finale of Justice League Unlimited titled Epilogue which was really much more of a bookend to the Batman Beyond series and also finale in many ways. In this episode we will eventually see an adult Terry McGuinness discovering his true heritage as a son of Bruce Wayne due to his cloned DNA. Now despite this being a very fantastic episode many fans me included disagree with the hugely controversial choice in making Terry indeed a son of Bruce and I think the reason for this is that I think it undercut a lot of Terry's existence and status. One of the main merits of Batman Beyond is that we were able to fully believe that a, another individual character was compelling enough and likeable enough to carry on the Batman mantle. Just making him a further extension of Bruce Wayne really took away the overall presence of Terry. The story itself does strain certain credibility and looking back I think it's a disappointing narrative in what otherwise is a great episode overall. 
Now we also did see an animated movie of the series titled Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. This was released in 2000 and despite the yet overuse of the Joker, I still think it's a fantastic and superb movie containing some of the most darkest and disturbing moments within all of the entire DC animated universe. Now there's been various comic book novels and graphic novel series continuing the overall mythos of the series itself. So overall when looking back at Batman Beyond, it's a classic case of being able to extend the Batman universe and I think overall its greatest achievement is that it's a prime example of continuing the set mythology both by paying respect to the previous material but also strong enough to introduce a further storyline with new ideas and maintain that sense of legacy and also taking the story in new directions. It really is something that I think a lot of studios and showrunners could really learn from as we see the constant barrage of remakes and reimaginings of classic franchises. So in regards to Batman Beyond, I suppose the only real lasting question is, will we eventually see a live action adaptation in the future? Now for those that don't know, we will indeed be getting a Flash movie in 2022, where we do in indeed see an aging version of Batman, the adaptation of Michael Keaton from the Tim Burton movies, maybe we'll, we'll see a hint of a Batman Beyond narrative but this won't be the true sense in terms of the overall series. Now personally I think there is so much potential in a Batman Beyond movie adaptation and I think if done right it will be hugely successful. Large sections of the fan base have been crying out for a live action treatment. I also feel that the series itself was very much cut short by ending on its third season and I think it would be very wise of Warner Brothers in terms of adding more content to the HBO Max platforms in seeing a continuation of the series itself much like as what we've recently seen announced in terms of the classic x-men the animated series as well so there's no reason why batman beyond couldn't have a continuation in the fourth and fifth season and very much so it deserves though because i think it's a very strong entry within the dc animated universe very creative very strong and very immersive and once again signaling the true era of the great legendary run as what we saw within DC animation. So those are my overall thoughts and feelings and review of Batman Beyond. Let me know what you think about it as a show overall in terms of a series. Where do you think it stands in the overall hierarchy of the classic DC animated show? And like me, would you look to see a further continuation of the mythos either in terms of a series or a live action movie let me know what you think in the comments below if you'd like to see me review other animated shows within a dc animated verse or indeed within a marvel universe then let me know in the comments and i will provide commentary for those series as well please also hit and like those subscription and notification buttons so i can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future but that's it for now take care of yourselves stay in safe distances and i will see you very very soon